Today, Colorado is more populated than Wyoming. Wyoming has little less than 580,000 residents, while Colorado has 5.8 million, 10 times the population of its northern neighbor. Why is there such a large population discrepancy? Let's find out. The mountain states are a group of west central states within the Rockies, including Idaho, Montana, Utah, Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. The last two, Colorado and Wyoming, share a border with each other. Both states do have a lot of similarities. Geomorphologically, Colorado and Wyoming are divided into two regions, the flat prairie east and the rugged mountainous west, with Wyoming having less of the former than Colorado. The eastern stretches of both states are relatively flat, with agricultural land for wheat crops and grazing. Both states have the Rockies dissecting through them, with peaks between 10,000 to 14,000 feet. The western sides of both states are mountainous, with range and basin topography. Colorado and Wyoming are both large rectangular states in size, with Colorado being slightly larger. Both states were admitted into the Union after the Civil War, with Colorado becoming a state in 1876 and Wyoming coming to stay in 1890. Culturally, both states share a lot of similarities with Western-themed influences, including rodeos, cowboys, and ranching, and the great outdoors. In terms of ecosystems, both states have a lot of biodiversity of similar species, including deer, elk, bear, bison, mountain lions, and eagles. So, if both states are very similar, why does Colorado have more than 10 times the number of people? You would think that Wyoming would have millions of residents, too. Well, there are several reasons why. Let's start with the physical ones. Although Colorado and Wyoming share a border, there are noticeable climatic differences. Since Wyoming is located further north, it's more prone to extreme temperature fluctuations. Of course, Colorado does experience all four seasons. However, winter may hang on a bit longer in Wyoming, especially in the northern part of the state closer to Montana. Even as late as May, Wyoming can get snowstorms that hamper travel. Also, most of the state receives low precipitation throughout the year, and hydrologically, there are no navigable rivers. This mix leads to a lack of irrigation for farming. Therefore, most of the agricultural endeavors is associated with ranching. This also leads to the next reason. As mentioned earlier, Wyoming has less prairie land in the east than Colorado, making the state more rugged. Generally, rugged terrain is hard to develop on. A rugged terrain, cold and dry climate, and unirrigated land are physical reasons why Wyoming hasn't become more populated. Another physical economic factor is natural resources. Settlers heading west in the 1800s traversed through the Louisiana Territory, and later the Missouri Territory, Kansas Territory, and the Nebraska Territory. In 1858, gold was discovered in the Kansas Territory, which three years later became the Colorado Territory. This initiated the Pikes Peak Gold Rush where around 100,000 prospectors went there to mine. On November 17, 1858, Denver City was incorporated in the Kansas Territory, leading to the gradual growth. Although this gold rush did promote growth, it wasn't until 1879 when another mineral, silver, was discovered, leading to the Colorado Silver Boom. By then, Colorado was a state for three years. This boom led to a massive growth of the state's population and economy. While Wyoming does have natural resources, the state never experienced any large-scale gold or silver booms, which is one of the likely physical economic causes in why the state never grew or materialized like Colorado. In 1870, Colorado had nearly 40,000 people, while Wyoming had around 9,100. By 1900, Colorado grew to nearly 540,000 people, while Wyoming only had 92,500. By 1900, Denver was a quickly growing city as other migrants from the East started to settle there, including European immigrants and African Americans who moved there for job opportunities such as mining and in the railroad industry. Another unique industry that flourished is the floriculture industry, which is the cultivating of flowers. This became known as the Carnation Gold Rush. Meanwhile, at the same time period, Wyoming was slowly growing, but nowhere at the rate that Colorado was. But something that did grow was the ranching and grazing industry. Many ranchers went to Wyoming to settle on land for the purpose of raising cattle and sheep. Another motivator for this was the availability of many thousands of acres of cheap land. Prospective ranchers took advantage of this opportunity. While this agricultural industry in Wyoming grew, the main urban areas really did not grow that much. 
Today, Cheyenne, the capital and largest city in the state, has only 65,000 residents, which will be comparable to a mid-sized town in a state such as California or Texas. Another thing that made Colorado a more populated state than Wyoming is that it became a major transportation hub. When Denver was growing rapidly in the early 20th century, several transportation links were built through it, including US-6, US-287, and US-85. Also, civilian rail links were built through the city, and Amtrak runs a hub out of Denver, and many freight rail services traverse through. In the 1950s, the interstate highway system was being constructed nationwide, which led to I-70, I-25, and I-76 being constructed through Colorado. I-80 was constructed through Cheyenne, Wyoming, but in that area, it's only located less than 10 miles from the Colorado border. So it does provide a vital link to Colorado via I-25. When air travel began in the 1920s, Denver Municipal Airport started operations. In 1944, it was renamed Stapleton Airfield in honor of Benjamin F. Stapleton, mayor of Denver. Air traffic grew significantly in the 1950s, and in 1964, the airport became Stapleton International Airport. While the airport was a hub for many major airlines and one of the busier airports, it was becoming antiquated. It was decided that a new, more modernized airport would be constructed. On February 28, 1995, Denver International Airport opened. The old Stapleton Airport was deconstructed, and today is the Central Park neighborhood of Denver. Nearly 30 years later, Denver International Airport is the third busiest international airport in the world. The new airport has led to further growth of Colorado. The 1990 population was 3.2 million, and now it's nearly 6 million. While Colorado has millions of people, the population distribution is concentrated mostly on the eastern side of the Rockies. Out of nearly 6 million people in Colorado, 3.2 million people live in the Denver Aurora metropolitan area, 755,000 live in the Colorado Springs metropolitan area, and 362,000 live in the Fort Collins Loveland metropolitan area, equaling around 4.3 million, around 75% of the total population. There are other populated metropolitan areas in Colorado, such as Pueblo and Grand Junction, the largest one in the western part of the state. Wyoming does have some metropolitan areas along I-25, but has several ones in other parts of the state, such as Rock Springs in the west along I-80, and the Jackson Micropolitan Area around Yellowstone National Park. But Wyoming's statistical areas are very small compared to Colorado's. Will Colorado and Wyoming will likely see population growth in the future. But will Wyoming see a higher growth rate soon? It may. Wyoming, along with Colorado, has large areas of oil shales, which contain carrageen, an organic chemical compound in which liquid hydrocarbons can be produced from. Hydrofracturing, or simply fracking, is a process of retrieving oil and natural gas from shale rock, and both states have areas where it's being implemented. The fracking industry has grown in recent years, so this may attract people into the area for job opportunities, possibly allowing Wyoming's population to dramatically increase. For example, Alberta, a west central province in Canada similar to Wyoming in physical geography, has seen a high population growth rate in recent decades because of the blossoming oil industry. Perhaps Cheyenne, Casper, and Laramie may see significant growth in the coming years. But one thing that may be a deterrent is public opposition. Some residents may be against the state becoming a second Colorado and may rather live in a place which is quaint, quiet, and rural. Thank you again for watching this episode. If you'd like to leave a comment, please do so in the comment section below. Remember to tune in for full-length episodes every Wednesday at 2 p.m. and for short videos every Monday and Friday at 3 p.m. Until next time!